Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we're going to discuss the government's controversial decision to process rice stocks it holds into ethanol. Raghu, this is something quite surprising because of course we have a large amount of food stocks in the go-downs, but at a time when it should be available for distribution to the people, that we should be converting it to ethanol? Is there an urgent requirement for ethanol in the country that you see? I don't see that at all. I am, in fact, completely flabbergasted by this decision uh, on two counts. One is, normally, if you are running short of ethanol, and ethanol in our country, we produce between 3,000 to 3,500 million liters a year. Uh, and it is uh, consumed roughly 50-50 between portable uh, alcohol and non-portable alcohol used in pharmaceuticals, chemicals industry, uh, etc. Now, for the last month and more, the portable alcohol industry is completely shut. There's no portable alcohol being made or sold in the country. So all that stock of uh, ethanol is still lying with the distilleries there. The chemical industry, on the other hand, is also mostly shut because of lockdown uh, restrictions. So the stock of alcohol being held by the uh, uh, non-portable alcohol industries, that's also shut. So I would think even the alcohol-based industries are holding about one-sixth to one-eighth of the total stock of alcohol annually available in this country. More than enough to make, I don't know how many kiloliters of uh, sanitizers uh, you need. That's number so one. Let me interrupt yeah. for a minute. Yeah. The question is here that anyway, this consumption of alcohol that people have deferred due to the lockdown is not going to spring up and increase if you lift the lockdown. Number not one. at all. Not number at all. two, this industrial slowdown is not for a short time. It's exactly. going to now continue for three to four months by all accounts. Absolutely. So therefore, this talk is not going to be spent up rapidly, not even enough. if the lockdown is lift, is not lift. at all. And in fact, the sugarcane crushing season and all our alcohol ethanol comes from the sugarcane. Uh, molasses. Molasses. The next crushing season of sugarcane is coming up in October, November of this year, when all these stocks are going to get replenished. Okay. And as you rightly said, before October, I don't see us using more than 25 to 30 percent of accumulated stocks, either in the distilleries or in the chemical uh, industries. And you're going to come with fresh stocks in October, November. So I don't see any shortage of alcohol uh, in this country. That's one aspect. The second aspect is there's a lot of noise the government is making about making sanitizers. But the real legal cover they are getting from this is from the biofuels policy, under which you have a license in years of excess production to convert surplus rice stocks into bioethanol used for dosing of petrol. Now, petrol also uh, is not being used in the country right now. There are no cars on the roads. There's no consumption of uh, petrol. The trucks which are running run on diesel, not on petrol. Uh, and oil prices are at their historical lowest since the 1990. In so, fact, people are now paying you exactly to lift, to lift their oil. oil. So their oil, oil. There is no shortage. Indian actually, India can make money by buying crude and converting it to ethanol. <laughs> exactly. So there is neither a demand side uh, problem in terms of bioethanol for petrol, nor is there a supply side problem in terms of what you have in stock in terms of alcohol. So I just do not understand the rationale for this, except for one thing is to dodge the repeated requests of civil society experts and many others demanding that the food stocks held by the government should be released for distribution to the poor. Aninda, you've been following the economic issues quite closely. Yeah. And of course, you have been carrying them on this click as well. The question to you is, is it because we are holding too much stock, our amount of stock we have in the FCI go-downs is already large, 
So in order to get now new stocks into the go-downs, instead of giving it to the poor, one way of creating space is to give it to the alcohol industry? Or even uh, actually produce it themselves. Because uh, one of the things that the government should have done long back, uh, actually many people have said that, and I had written in the beginning of March, that our, uh, sanitizers by liters need to be distributed to slums because there's no water there. Right? And as Comrade uh, Raghurandan uh, just pointed out, that you know, a liter of sanitizer lasts you probably a month or more. So you really didn't need any of this. I think the logic, my uh, uh, friend Srinivasan Jain of NDTV actually did a story, a series of stories on the kind of stock that there is. And at the same time, people are going hungry in India. And the government responded by saying, no, there's enough food being given to the poor. And also after that, they've announced that they'll be using it to make ethanol. Supposedly because there's excess rice, more than what Indians consume. And now, the point is, I think that if you let the poor consume more than what they currently consume, uh, which is, I think, about less than 500, uh, availability is less than 500 grams per person uh, per day, around 485, yeah. uh, 490, uh, I don't exactly remember the number. Uh, they will get used to eating more. Now, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, Marx wrote in Capital when he discusses the value of labor power, that how do you, how do you, how are wages created? There he says that in the chapter on national differences in uh, wages and how labor power, when it's reproduced, uh, requires different things dependent on the certain cultural and local aspects. For instance, he quotes uh, a book from 1770 saying, uh, that uh, in England, which is a lament by the writer, that in England there are too many luxuries that the workers use. Which is, they need snuff, they need beer, and look at the Germans or the Belgians, they're so good, they live on very little. Now, if you let the poor increase their consumption, effectively you're for the long term increasing the basic real consumption of people, which has not been done for ages. So if you distribute food, because there is absolutely no logic why successive governments do not give food to the poor. The only logic there can be that you have to keep real consumption of the poor low, absolutely at subsistence level. And that is one of the reasons why you will not distribute rice and increase consumption, uh, even indirect consumption. Uh, so what you're saying, Anindo, is basically that you depress the consumption because you want their wages to be also held low. Absolutely. So that is also the other part of it. And I mean, second, there is, can you give, is there any logic? I, I, I have never... Feeding the rats in the FCI go-downs who are getting quite fat and yeah. not feeding the people. And right. the this second, as you know, and as you know, Anindo, as you know, that if you hold stocks for too long, you yeah. of course lose a part of your stocks to pests and all Absolutely. kinds of other uh, insects or it deteriorates. The other part of it is also that under the current conditions of a lockdown, many other things are not available to the poor. So in fact, rice and wheat would be major elements in their food because yeah. as you know, the argument has been that as the poor in India have had also access to other foods, they have stopped eating that much of rice or wheat as they used to do earlier. So Which of course the, the people who make this argument worst. never tell us what excess amount of food these of people what? are eating. I mean the availability of potatoes in this country, average, which includes people like me who eat a lot of potatoes, uh, is uh, what, 25 kilos per person per year? Or maybe 30 kilos per person per year in a good, that's the availability uh, or consumption level. And yet we have people tell us and that's two kilos in a, in a month on an average. And we, we hear people say, oh, the people are eating potatoes, they're eating, that onions, is, they're eating a lot of chicken. That's why they've stopped eating rice. That, that's the Sapantag argument. Can you please tell us what are they eating per capita, which has gone up? Nothing. And there, of course, the answer I is think only eggs. I think only eggs has gone up marginally in the last uh, 15 years. Everything, is, everything else is lower than what it used to be. So, so there, is, there is absolutely no argument why we should not be distributing more food grains under the current conditions. Like, let's yeah. say the government of India is giving... Uh, sorry, I'm uh, uh, interrupting 
uh, but the government of India is giving five kilos of free rice or wheat to the to eighty crore, supposedly eighty crore people under the Pradhan Mantri uh, Garib Kalyan Yojana. Now, therefore, the government of India today effectively accepts that eighty crore Indians are poor, right? Because if it is Garib Kalyan, surely eighty crore of them are poor. <laughs> That means that the poverty level in this country is 57%. That means the government of India has accepted that. Uh, along with that, there was talk, I don't know whether that has continued, that uh, three, uh, uh, seven kilos per head will be given at three rupees per kilo per month for three months. So you get a total of 12 kilos of rice or wheat at, uh, uh, by paying just 21 rupees for rice and 14 rupees for wheat. <coughs> which again works out to 12 kilos by 30 is 400 grams per day. Now this is lower than what people were eating long ago. Many, right. I think more than a hundred years ago. So, uh, and these, this is going to people who are going to be doing manual labor or used to doing manual labor. And that is what they eat. If you look at people who work in your homes, you see how much cereal they eat and that is what they eat. So even if you tell them, take more of this, take more, they're not used to it. So neoliberal economists and columnists and all these people will tell you that, oh, the poor are eating eggs, fish, mutton, and all that thing. And therefore, they're not consuming that. This is all uh, in French. Bunk. If I may say in French, this is all rubbish. It's all bunk up unless we use French, as you uh, said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just two points I'd like to add to that, Prabhi. Try yeah, go on. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the, the two points is, one is the claim by the government that they are distributing this amount under the PM uh, Garib Kalyan Yojana. Press reports all over, including in News Click, reports have come that people are not getting this on one reason or another. Ration card nahi hai, Aadhaar card nahi hai, you are uprooted from where you were, so you don't have documents, you can't access the PDS system, uh, etc. That is one. State governments are doing what they can. Some governments, some governments are not at all. In Gujarat, for example, 95% of migrant workers are not being given any food. In the Delhi condition, it may be 70 to 75% are being given. That still leaves a huge chunk of people who are not getting any food and who are lining up for handouts by NGOs and voluntary organizations who are barely able to give them food once uh, a day. So that is one part of it. The second part of it is uh, the chairman of the Food Corporation of India, who is responsible for the food grain stocks being held, has just yesterday, and the report has come out uh, today in the newspapers, has said, look, various people are demanding that food grain be released from the FCI go-downs to feed the poor. I want to clarify, that's what the FCI chairman has said, that we do not have any surplus of food grains. We have only sufficient buffer stock till the next harvest comes in. So we have no excess amount to feed to the poor. Now, you don't have excess money, uh, grain to feed to the poor, but you have excess grain to convert into alcohol. This is completely ununderstandable. I have a feeling this fellow is going to get sacked tomorrow. To feed cars which are not running. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's right. That's the beauty of it. That's right. That's right. Uh, Arindu, this is an important question. What figures we see is FCI is holding almost twice the stocks, it, the buffer stock it requires at the moment in its go down. Yeah. So how does this statement look? It, uh, as uh, d I think uh, Comrade Raghunandan said, that uh, it looks like uh, it, it's a risky statement to have made if you want to keep your job. <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> but apart from that, the, all the figures we have for FCI stocks, mm -hmm. it, it is much more than the buffer stock. So what, the, what, where is he speaking from? Uh, again, I think the point is that uh, there's a bit of miscommunication. There must yeah. be some, someone must have told him that you must say that there's not, not too much That's time right. here. The media is saying, why is the food not being distributed? In the meantime, someone else says there's a lot and we are going to convert it into <laughs> ethanol. So, the classic so, issue of the left hand yeah, yeah. of the government or yeah. left side of the mouth of the government not no. hearing what the right side of the government is saying. Yeah. Probably if we I, I, go by the figures, 
strictly by numbers, uh, government is holding today something like 56 million tons, 30 million tons roughly of uh, rice and 25, 26 million tons of uh, wheat. The buffer stock as on April 1 that they should be holding according to the norms is about 22 million tons. Okay, so they are, yeah, so about two and two and a half uh, times nine. that. And that is precisely why uh, activists and civil society organizations, political parties have been demanding you are holding more than your reserve stock as prescribed. Release it to the poor. Uh, you know, and this, this is what, and today's problem is the rice harvest is already in. Now for the next harvest, you have to wait. The wheat harvest has just uh, come in now. So there is a period of time during which you will be releasing money from this, I mean, grain from this stock that you're held over the next, let's say, four to five months to the PDS uh, system, which will then bring your levels of food grain stock down. So I think these are the numbers that the poor FCI uh, corporation chairman is playing with to say, yeah, well, we have some surplus, but it is not that much. But it is surely sufficient for distribution. Now, unless either you say, yes, we have this amount of surplus, but we don't want to distribute it, we want to make alcohol, or you have to come out with it and say, I don't have surplus, which the figures itself contradict. So all of this seems to be that the government policy at the moment does not seem to be at least coordinated. And of course, there is a huge, shall we say, lack of uh, regard for the conditions of the poor, which has always been argued that this, uh, all the measures that the government has been taking and all the, even the prime minister's uh, speeches that he has been giving more for the middle class base, rather than looking at it from the point of view of the poor. And more importantly, the central government does not really have the responsibilities of distribution of food, for instance, no. at the local level. So at the at a, another level, they don't really care. Yeah. That's not their headache. That's not their problem. So that is somehow the issue that we seem to get. And do you think, Anindo, this is in some sense an indirect largest for the alcohol companies, those who produce alcohol and are currently are not able to do so? So government gives them free rice in some sense and then Maybe. buys the sanitizers as a kind of largest? It could be that. But be. Uh, I, I, I have a slightly different uh, perspective on this government's attitude towards the poor. I think that uh, uh, if you look at it, this government has, uh, has a, uh, I just looked at some of the data on uh, income and consumption that, that is available. We know that the government of India has uh, held back the latest consumption data that came through. But one of the things even in that consumption data was that came out was that the poorest 10% of people in rural India, their consumption went down by 1% in five years, but the top 20%, their consumption went down by, or top 10%, their consumption went down by 11%. If you look at the poorest 30% in urban India, their consumption actually went up by 10%. So I actually have a slightly different view on what this government wants. Uh, if I look at uh, the last, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the Mabad's financial inclusion survey, then we know that in 2017, 30% of the rural population, 30% of the rural population had a household income less than 3,558. Now, if we convert that into today's 2020 uh, money, keeping in mind inflation, Although we know that in rural India, actually, uh, wages have not kept uh, pace with uh, inflation. Uh, but despite that, I'll just take a general inflation rate. It comes to a slightly less than about 4,000 rupees. So let's take that as 4,000 rupees. So we can easily say about five and a half crore uh, households in India, more, uh, all of them in rural India, have an... Uh, household income of less than 4,000 rupees when they work. When they're not working, this government is giving them an advance of 2,000 rupees, which was supposed to come in June. You get it in April. Um, it's going to about 8.7 8 
crore farmers out of which, and we know last year they didn't spend the entire money, so all of it hasn't gone because some states haven't sent the list. Uh, 19.6 crore Jandhan accounts for women, they're giving 500 rupees. From our perspective, it looks like absolutely paltry amounts and how will people survive on that? But if you're used to surviving on less than 4,000 rupees per month, entire household, five and a half crore families, then 4,000 rupees or uh, even getting 2,000, then another uh, two 500 rupee uh, installments, a free LPG, some rice without working is actually not bad at all. So this government is very clear. Keep people at subsistence level and let them be completely dependent on handouts. No jobs, no work. They should be beholden to various Pradhan Mantri Kalyan Yojana. So if you go and ask them, what is your condition? They'll say, we are not bad. I guess uh, my uh, former colleague, Ravish Kumar, actually, he collected a lot of information from uh, migrant workers. And some of it I've used in my shows in NewsClick, and I've also written about it. And uh, he, has, uh, he also got a lot of messages from them on WhatsApp, which he forwarded to me. And I've gone through them. Most of them, these messages that have come, say that Modi ji ne hamare liye bahut kiya hai. Paise mil gaye hai. In many places, there are people have been migrant workers who are in urban areas have been told by the uh, village punch that come back to the village because money is being distributed. So people are used to living at absolutely pauperized levels. It's the reverse of what Marx said. You know, it's like the Belgian or the German worker of the 18th century who was living on absolute pauperized levels. And that pauperized level is where this government keeps it. And I do not think it's doing anything for the middle class. Either. The only thing it does for the Indian middle class is that it has an anti-Muslim rhetoric, which the middle class is lapping up thanks to uh, the national media. And, and uh, they love it. They're, they're, they're living with that and they're happy with that. Because the number of people, number of small businesses in India who, are, who have no revenue flow, no cash flow right now, and they're unable to pay back loans, they're unable, people, small traders, unable to pay back, pay their EMIs. Uh, many places where people have factories with uh, workers, core staff who have worked for 20 years, they are uh, sacking everyone else, but still playing these people. Because there is a certain amount of, you know, uh, non-market connection that you develop and they're taking loans to do that. So I think that the Indian middle class is in a deep, deep kind of uh, funk. They're in deep trouble and it'll take yeah, them so we'll have to, to come out of it. We'll have to do that discussion another day. Yeah. Because right. this has nothing to do really with ethanol and <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, so what, what I'm saying is that the, the objective of the government, the reason why even when it distributes food, doesn't, yet it doesn't want to distribute the uh, excess amount that's lying, I can only think of keeping real wages low. Because if people learn to eat more, they'll demand more. So they will actually, to keep people at the lowest subsistence level, Absolutely. is the Absolutely. objective of the government. Yeah. So make them dependent. Make them live at the subsistence level. Don't do anything by which actually their standard of living and even food, which right. also subsistence increases. And that would explain right. why instead of giving rice, you give it to the alcohol companies. And this is, a, this is an old thing. In 2009, we did a story on NDTV in the Hindi channel where our reporter went and took footage of uh, monkeys in FCI godowns eating and the food wasn't being distributed. There was a surplus, I think nine or 10. And the government of, uh, we, I think IMB ministry sent us a notice for spreading fake <laughs> news at that time. And we remember what Montek Singh Aluwalia and uh, the finance, you know, the planning commission had said at that time, that 13 rupees, I think, is enough per day for people to survive because that's what they'd taken as the ground. So even at that time, there was excess. This is a continuous process we have seen yeah. throughout the liberalization years. And uh, the Modi government has probably only made it worse in a lot of ways. So the only thing is, as Raghu says, this sort of stands out, if nothing else, at the level of stupidity. Yeah. You are talking at this time yeah. of feeding cars mm -hmm. and not feeding people from your rice stock.
So that, that seems to be the, the crux of the issue today. And on top of it, when people are actually paying money for you to lift oil stocks, mm -hmm. if you actually, there's a, what is the price of what is minus $37, yeah, which means right. that people are paying if you lifted their oil uh, mm -hmm. from them. So this is on one hand the condition, the oil prices really have collapsed, the cars are not running, but you're giving rice to make ethanol for the cars. So by no logic, forget normal conditions, today's condition yeah, yeah. has absolutely no logic whatsoever not to do this. And the only reason I can think of is to make some space in the go-downs for the new rice stock which is to arrive. And yeah. of course help the alcohol industry, which must be suffering from the uh, lockdown because alcohol is not considered essential goods. Mm -hmm. So therefore it is not, it's, it's factories are unlikely to open soon still. Thank you very much Anindo and Raghu for being with us and we will continue to have this, this and other discussions with you as we follow through what happens during and after the lockdown. This is all the time we have in News Click today. Do keep watching News Click and our other discussions. Thank <laughs> you.